What are the three things I want to see BYU improve on the most as they get ready to take on Wyoming? We're examining that on today's edition of Locked On Cougars. You are Locked On Cougars, your daily podcast on the BYU Cougars, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, everybody? I'm Jay Catch, your host here on Locked On Cougars, a resident BYU insider. Thank you for making Locked On Cougars your first listen of the day. We are very proud to be part brought to you today by our title sponsor, LinkedIn. I would like to thank LinkedIn Jobs for being the official college football recruiting sponsor across the Locked On College Network. LinkedIn Jobs is helping you find the candidates that you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at LinkedIn.com slash Locked On College. Terms and conditions apply. All right, a lot to get to ahead on today's show, but real quick, we're very proud to be part of the Locked On Podcast Network. The motto around these parts is your team every day, and as such, this is your only daily podcast focused on the BYU Cougars, so thank you for making some time to join us. Our goal here, my goal, simply stated, is to make you the smartest BYU fans in the room. All right, let's dive in today and talk a little BYU football. That's kind of where we start every show, but there are three things that have been bugging me the most since Saturday and obviously my film review that I talked about on Monday. There are three key areas I feel like BYU needs to improve on this week as they get ready for Wyoming, and I'm not necessarily convinced that the results of these improvements may yield themselves Saturday night, but they are three things BYU needs to improve on nonetheless. Now let's run them down. Number one, BYU needs to settle on who their right tackle is going to be. If it's Kingsley Suomataia, so be it. Make him the guy. If Campbell Barrington is in the mix, find a spot for him. Maybe let Campbell Barrington be the starter for this game and see if he is the better option at right tackle. You need to settle on five consistent guys on BYU's offensive line. I know Aaron Roderick said during training camp that he was willing to play upwards of eight, nine, maybe even 10 guys. But at this point, it feels like they have really narrowed in on six guys with Joe Tukuaf, who essentially being the seventh guy who sees spot duty at guard. Those are the guys they've settled on. I just want to see them settle on the five guys who are going to be the guys in that unit. And obviously, I think Kingsley offers a lot of upside, but in many ways, my film review from the Oregon game, I thought that Campbell Barrington, in my estimation, trust me, I'm far from an expert on this, I thought Campbell Barrington performed better in his his spot uh, duty in that game against Oregon. So, number one. Settle your offensive line. And even if the right guard position is in flux, we saw Joe Tukuafu come in in the tail end of that Oregon game in place of Harris Lachance. If there's any question about the starting five, get it settled. We're three, now almost four games into the season. This needs to be sealed up. It needs to be done. And then you can move on from there if you're the BYU football program. The number two thing I want to see BYU work on this week is improve special teams. Right now, BYU's place kicking is a mess. Uh, Ed Lamb said on the Coordinator's Corner show on BYU TV that there will be a place kicking competition. Does that mean it's an open competition that Jake Oldroyd could be replaced? I don't know, but I would hope that they are giving guys like Cash Peterman and Justin Smith, the two other kickers on BYU's roster, as well as if Ryan Rico, the punter, if he's got an ability to place kick a little bit, give them a shot. You have to have a much more consistent kicking game. Right now, it's an Achilles heel for BYU, knowing that you not not knowing that you can rely on getting three points when you get inside what the 35 yard line or so. It, it, it's it's something BYU needs to figure out. Punting, by the way, Ryan Rico, he's not off to a stellar start. This was a guy who was considered to be one of the top punters in the country. I thought he had a chance, potentially, if he had a big year this year, to make to the jump to the NFL. Unless he really gets it going, his averages right now, punting, are just not what they typically have been. He has not flashed that extra strong leg that we got accustomed to seeing last year when he was called upon to kick the ball away. This is the dude who has the single game record for long punt in BYU football history. I think it's like 82 yards yards, something to that effect. He has got a massive leg. I'd like to see him start showing it off a little bit more, and that obviously needs to improve. BYU's coverage teams need to be better. The tackle of the guy on a fair catch by Austin Riggs, the long snapper against Oregon, that was just beyond boneheaded, I feel like. But I will absolve him of one thing. If you go back and watch the film, 
Notice who they actually called for the personal foul in that instance. They actually called it on Keenan Peely as he came in and blasted the other return guy uh, towards the tail end of that play. So I thought it was Austin Riggs. Most of us did, but Keenan Peely actually was the guy who was penalized in that instance. But still, tackling a guy after he's gone to the ground, after signaling fair can signaling for a fair catch, what are you doing? Get out of the way. Stop doing that. The coverage teams on kick return have had their issues, especially against USF. We all saw that. The kick return for a touchdown made things a little nervy there for a little bit. They have been better in their coverage units, but obviously they can improve even more so. And then the final thing, you need to find more of an impact uh, when it comes to the return game. Hobbs Nyberg was back for BYU this past week against Oregon after sitting out the previous two games due to an undisclosed situation. I understand it wasn't injury related, but I don't know why he was sitting out. I am hopeful that he'll get back to showing more of what he showed at the tail end of last year, particularly in the punt return game. I'm not convinced that he is the ideal option at kick returner. I'd give some guys like a Parker Kingston, et cetera, an opportunity to show what they can do. Parker, this kid returned kicks for Roy High School. He's got elite track speed. Why not give him that opportunity? I know that kick returns aren't necessarily a big part of today's college football, uh, but give him that opportunity. Open it up. Make special teams a priority. They need to be improved. The, the special teams unit right now is actually hampering BYU rather than typically helping it. And crazy, crazy enough to think about it, BYU brought back every major contributor on special teams. Returners, snappers, kicker, punter, they returned it all. There is no excuse for how bad this unit has been so far this season. Clean that up. Now, number three, the third thing I want to see cleaned up this week against Wyoming is better tackling. BYU was so good, by and large, in the first two games of the season. As we talked about it, they had two official missed tackles, according to analytics, going into that Oregon game. By my count, in the first two series against Oregon alone, I counted nine missed tackles in the first two Oregon series for BYU's defense. Get back to basics. Get back to your fundamentals. It's been kind of the rallying cry for BYU's coaches and players. Players this week. We're going to get to an interview with Logan Latui, who featured prominently in that game against Oregon here in a moment. But you've got to clean up that. If you cannot tackle effectively, you're going to find yourself in a very, very tough situation because Wyoming, similar to Oregon, is more than content to jam it down your throat with the run game. And they will take that all night long. They want to short it, shorten the game. They want to win time of possession. They want to limit possessions. The only way to combat that is to tackle effectively, and when the first guy gets there, wrap up, get the guy to the ground, and if guys need to come help him, you hold on for dear life. The first guy, the other guys come and clean the other guy's clock. Start trying to rip that football out. Don't try and make the hero play right now. I've talked about this multiple times over the past few years for BYU's defense. When they have a bad tackling game, it's 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 glaring. It, it truly is glaring for BYU. They have to be better when it comes to tackling. I want to see them get back to basics. Will they actually tackle to the ground in practice? Highly, highly doubt it. But these are guys who have played football for a very long time. They did not forget how to tackle. They just need to get back to doing the fundamentals. Get your head on the strong side. Wrap up. Drive through the guy. Get them to the ground. Too many times last week, Oregon was running through arm tackles. Guys going too high, not wrapping up, not securing the tackle. You cannot have that. It is going to hurt BYU for uh, in bigger games than this, than the Wyoming game. It hurt BYU in that Oregon game. There's no doubt about it. The inability to tackle effectively, they have got to get that cleaned up. And if they don't, well, it could be another long night at Lavelle Edwards Stadium, and you may drop a game that BYU fans had just written down in bold uh permanent marker before the season. Well, that's a win going up against Wyoming. This could be a very different game if you do not tackle effectively. So those are the three things I want to see BYU figure out. Settle your offensive line, in particular that right tackle position. Number two, clean up the special teams. It needs to be a strength rather than a hindrance for BYU and tackling on defense. You got to tackle more effectively. Now, the other thing, probably some of you are screaming at your uh, podcast provider of choice or at YouTube saying, well, what about the run game, Jake? I am hopeful that BYU, it was more of an anomaly the past two games with the issues against the run game going up against two pretty talented defensive fronts that BYU will have better success against Wyoming. If they don't, then I've got all kinds of alarm bell bells will be going off at that point because at that point, you've gone up against one of the, I guess, lesser defensive lines and you cannot get traction offensively with the run game. That is when I'll be super, super concerned. So that's why I kind of left that one off the list for this week. We'll see what happens and see if they can prove 
prove me wrong. Uh, you heard Clark Barrington. They want to get back to fundamentals themselves on the offensive line and get back to running the football effectively. He said that on yesterday's show, if you happen to miss that. All right, coming up here in just a moment, as mentioned, Logan Latui, a walk-on transfer from Weber State. I don't know much about him. I did not know much about him, I guess I should say, before I talked to him at practice yesterday. I wanted to know more about what brought him to BYU, how he has factored in so heavily so far in training camp as well as the season, obviously getting the start against Oregon. What led to all of that? We'll get to that in just a moment. First, though, a word on our friends over at LinkedIn. These days, every new potential hire can feel like a high-stakes wager for your small business. You want to be 100% certain that you have the access to the best qualified candidates available. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs is helping you find the right people for your team faster and for free. That's what they're doing here. They want you guys to make sure that you can make it as easy as possible to find qualified candidates. All you got to do is go to LinkedIn Jobs, post your job there, then add your job in the purple hashtag hiring frame to your LinkedIn profile to spread the word that you're hiring as a company. Simple tools like screening questions will make it easy to focus on the candidates with just the right skills and experience so you can quickly prioritize who you would like to interview and hire. And the best part is it's why small businesses rate LinkedIn jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. So give it a shot, my friends. LinkedIn jobs is helping you find the qualified candidates that you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free terms and conditions apply. Thank you once again for making Locked On Cougars your first listen of the day. Always appreciate you guys checking out the show. And a guy that saw the field very prominently against Oregon was number 59, Logan Latui. Now, he is a guy that joined the roster during training camp for BYU. And his name popped up as a transfer from Weber State, a walk-on to the program. And I was wondering, okay, who is this kid? And when he started against Oregon, color me as stunned as anybody. I, I, I When I saw him out there, I'm like, what is going on? I talked about this on Monday edition of the podcast. I said a, a walk-on transfer from Weber State is beating out multiple other guys to be the backup to Tyler Batty at opposite end, which is the role that Logan Latui is playing. That should be a little bit of an indictment on BYU's recruiting, but at the same time, it's actually a credit to Logan Latui and his ability to play football. This is a guy who spent time at Weber State, so I figured, you know what? I'm going to be at practice. I want to do something a little more offbeat. Let's have an opportunity to catch up with Logan Latui, and I started off by asking him, Logan, well, what's your backstory? Where are you from? For the past two years, I was playing at, up at Weber State. Mm -hmm. um, I loved it up there. Great program. We had great success. Um, what brought me here to U uh, BYU was that uh, me and my wife just made a decision of what was best for our family with her uh, being pregnant and all, and now is having a son. And, um, yeah, we were initially going to just step away from football, and, but there was opportunity here, and, yeah, um, that's what actually brought us here. Yeah, I guess the little the little boy he brought us here. <laughs> All right, uh, you you got some family connections to the program. Did that also help play a role? in, hey, I'm I'm gonna give it a shot. Um, yeah. So, it, not not too much, but they just knew that when I entered the transfer portal, you know, coaches know, and then they see your film. So, I think also part of that was my production up at Weaver State. Yeah. You played in kind of that, that, I guess, is it the OE was you're playing right now? So you're playing that OE role against uh, Oregon last week. Stepping in for Tyler Batty, how did, I guess, how did you feel you performed overall? Um, speaking for myself, I feel like, of course, there's there a lot of things we could improve on. Our defense wasn't playing of what we're capable of. But I feel like um, I did my job. I did well, but like I said, um, nothing to, to boast about with our defensive performance. But there's a lot of um, improvement there for us. Talking with Coach Tuiaki, he talked about the fact that they, they at halftime they said they were going to make some changes, and wholesale changes in many ways. Going into how difficult is that in game? You go in with one plan, you've been play, doing that all week. All of a sudden, at like halftime, they're like, "Hey, we're tearing that up. We're going with this." Yeah, um, you know that's part of football. You got to make adjustments on the fly. Um, that adjustment we made it actually helped us. You know, um, it, it helped us to you know put a little bit more stop on the runs in the interior. So it, it was a little tough, but. You know, that's how football is. You just be able to be agile and adjust with it. You're a defensive lineman by trade, but when you met, line up kind of middle linebacker spot, how difficult is that for a guy that's used to having his hand in the dirt? Yeah, um, you're, you have different keys you're reading. It's not as, uh, you know, at, at the end it's kind of simple. You know what you're looking at. At linebacker, there's a little bit more, you know, you have to take in count of. So it was a little, it, it was, uh, it was different. It was, you had to adapt to that. Um, we had good practice throughout the week. So 
I'll just say that, yeah, it was, it was, it was a little different for us. A guy like Tyler Batty's played that position pretty extensively. How much has he been a help to get you acclimated? Oh, Tyler Batty, he's a great uh, asset to our position group. He's a great leader. Um, he's just, you know, supportive with – he's he's always there for coaching points and to help us with, you know, different techniques for – because he's been at this position for a little bit. So he's a, he's a great um, advantage for us when we're, you know, called to play in big games like that. I know you're coached by Coach Hadley. What's your favorite thing about him? Uh, Coach Hadley, man, he's something that not many people know about him, but he he spits some real, real, uh, real life lessons for us in our in our meetings and out here on the field. So it's good having Coach Hadley. He, he's a great coach, but he's a great life mentor as well. Yeah. If I'm not mistaken, you're a local boy who grew up here in Utah. Do you know much about the Wyoming BYU series at all? Um, not much. I, I'm from here. Uh, I didn't. I was a fan of BYU. Uh, did I? F I didn't follow them, you know, as yeah, as much as you know the diehard BYU fans. But so I, I couldn't say much about the BYU and Wyoming rivalry, whatever it is. Just give me a sense. You guys obviously are watching film on them. What do you see from them on film? Um, we see that they're they're a very downhill running team. You know, coming in from last week, they probably saw us struggle a little bit with the run. So that's what they're gonna stick to. Uh, so they're they're gonna be a, they're gonna be coming out as hard. They're gonna be tough, but we feel like we have a, a good game plan. And from that loss, we're gonna come back even harder this week. Last thing for me, what are one or two keys that you guys feel like you need to improve on most this week coming out of that Oregon loss and getting ready for this game? Um, first off, is the fundamentals, making sure we're in the right assignment, doing the right assignments, tackling, and second off, just uh, playing with more urgency. I feel that was a lack of in our last game, you know. But I feel like with just cleaning up those two simple things, we're gonna we're gonna show what we can do, you know, like in that Baylor game. Awesome, Logan. Thanks so much for some time. Yeah, thank you so much. There you go, Logan Latui, BYU defensive end. And interesting to hear him talk about, yeah, the the fundamentals. As I said, it was kind of the rallying cry this week. I've heard from all the media sessions is we need to be better about our fundamentals on defense in particular. But also to hear him acknowledge that the urgency wasn't quite there for BYU in the game against Oregon. I, I know that sounds – how do I say it? It sounds rough, and it, it even sounds like almost an indictment of the squad. But Ed Lamb, I said it also on the coordinator's corner, I felt like the moment was too big for us. And that statement right there, that that's frankly stunning to me for Ed Lamb to say that the moment for BYU going into Autzen was too big for this team. This is a veteran – BYU squad. Let's led by Jaron Hall, a very veteran offensive line. There's a lot of upperclassmen on this team. And for a coach like Ed Lamb, who has got a lot of oversight for more than just special teams, safeties, etc., he is the assistant head coach. For him to say that he felt like the moment was too big for this team, that should sting a little bit if you're a member of the BYU football program right now. But it was good to hear from Logan. Interesting to hear his backstory. He actually was just a walk-on who uh, was going to step away from football, it sounds like. And I, I don't think I'm uh, breaking too many uh, things out there when I say that he's actually the son-in-law of BYU's uh, Jack DeMooney. Jack serving on the off-the-field staff for B uh, Kalani Satake, doing a great job in the recruiting realm, etc. And so uh, Logan is married to Jack's daughter is the connection he has to the BYU football program but uh really really cool to hear his story and like i said it's a little bit of an indictment on byu's recruiting the fact that he has kind of risen up the depth chart this quickly and has become the backup at opposite end or outside end i guess i should say behind a guy like tyler batty but it's also credit to this young man he was he was ready to step away from football for his family for his wife and son and it sounds like uh he has made good on the bet on himself deciding you know what i'm gonna give it a shot at byu and uh according to elisa tuiaki he was he's a true walk-on and he said that he got himself into school actually walked on during the spring summer period and it's just he said uh, just kept showing up practice after practice throughout training camp so a really interesting story so uh, thank you to logan latui for taking the time and hope you guys were able to learn a little something about number 59 out there for the byu football program all right coming up here in just a minute we're going to talk about some rumors out there involving one of byu's better players at the tight end position we also need to talk about byu's new basketball uniforms they released a, a new fresh look we'll get to all of that in just a moment first though a word on our friends over at bet online bet online is your number one source for all of your pro and college football betting needs and sports information this season find all the latest football league development 
performance both in college and pro with game matchups, news, and podcasts now. Bet Online is your continued source for all of your sports wagering information, including live betting, esports, and scores. If you're wondering about where BYU's line stands with Bet Online right now, it is minus 21. It opened up at minus 20.5. It's moved up to three full touchdowns for the BYU football program as of recording of this podcast. Bet Online is also the fastest and the easiest way to check in on all of your favorite sports and events beyond football, including Major League Baseball, MMA, boxing, and golf. NBA is on its way too, folks, so keep an eye on that. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends in action available to you now. That's all courtesy of your friends at Bet Online, where the game starts. All right, before we go here on today's show, I uh, need to talk about some things out there. Dallin Holker, and uh, he is obviously all over the internet. If you're if you're using social media, you've heard the rumors, or if you're paying attention to any message board, it feels like it's all over the place. Uh, what I understand is that Dallin Holker intends to leave the BYU football program and transfer. His de- destination at this point, very much unknown. Uh, there are hints out there that he may consider relocating up to the University of Utah. Now, when it comes to Dallin Holker, He can make this decision now, but wake up tomorrow and decide, you know what? I want to keep playing for BYU. The thing about this right now is with the transfer portal, he cannot enter the portal yet. The NCAA, not even six days ago, uh, told college football programs to remove the names of any student athletes who had entered the transfer portal since the new portal windows, which were approved by the NCAA's governing body, went into effect on August 31st. Uh, Schools were also told not to contact any student athletes who have entered that portal during that time frame. So what it is, is the NCAA Division I Board of Governors voted to approve 60 days throughout the calendar year in which student athletes will be able to enter the transfer portal, that change went into effect for this season. So as it stands right now, if he is intent on leaving the program, speaking of Dallin Holker, and like I said, this is still a very fluid situation based on everything I understand. It, it's not a, a done deal, etc. He could decide to come back to BYU if he wants to. But as it stands right now is football players are going to be allowed to enter the portal for 45 days beginning the day after the college football playoff field is announced. Now you're wondering, okay, when is that, Jake? Well, as of now, the announcement of the college football playoff field is set for Sunday, December 4th. So he would not be able, according to what I understand, he would not be able to officially enter the transfer portal until Monday, December 5th. That is over two months away. There's a long way to go here for Dallin Holker. Is he going to withdraw from school and decide to train and then enter the portal and figure out what his next destination is? Very possibly. But this situation, it, it, and the other thing about this, the other thing I need to add on this, is the reason he's deciding to do this now is he is a junior on BYU's roster. He wants to preserve two full years of eligibility still. He has a redshirt year intact. If he wants to keep that redshirt year and use that, I guess, to keep the eligibility alive, you can only play it up to four games. BYU's played three. If he were to play this week against Wyoming, that's four. And then after that, he would be obviously using a year of eligibility and only have one year remaining. At a, at a new school should he des- decide to, to opt to do that. So, like I said, it, it's not a done deal that he is going to leave the program, speaking of Dallin Holker, but as of right now, everything I heard talking to people last night after the rumors really started emerging is that he is intending to leave the program. His destination, where he's going to transfer to, still very much up in the air, but there are rumors out there involving the University of Utah. So, so be it. And that is why he is going about things the way he's going. You may think that he's stepping away from his program in the middle of a season, uh, kind of uh, leaving them high and dry. No, it, it's in his best interest if he wants to preserve extra uh, eligibility to play for two full seasons at his new school. Now, let me also add this on the tight end front for BYU. Crazily enough, Isaac Rex is only a redshirt sophomore, folks. He could play two full, no, two, no three, excuse me. No, yeah, no, I'm I'm right. Two more. (laughs) He could play two more full seasons for BYU as the Cougars leading tight end. There's no doubt he is the number one guy for BYU right now. Mason Wake is very much a talented guy who has actually emerged as a true tight end option for BYU. So he would be able to step in and fill kind of that role that Dallin Holker leaves. And by the way, there are other guys coming into the program. Jackson Bowers is a four star prospect who's intending to enroll at BYU next season. Also, Ethan Erickson, he is the guy that I've been waiting to break out for BYU. Aaron Roderick said it during training camp that Ethan Erickson throughout spring and throughout the summer just kept showing up. Similar to what we just talked about with Logan Latui. 
every practice, was making play after play after play. Well, this would give him, in theory, an opportunity to show what he can do over the final nine games of the schedule for BYU. And they don't even count out guys like Lane Lunt, Carter Wheat. Uh, I don't, man, the, the, the depth for BYU's tight end position, it's not a position that you're like, Oh, if we lose this guy, we're, we're dead in the water. Would you do you want to lose a guy like a Dallin Holker, who I liken a, to a guy like Dennis Pitta? No, you do not. You you don't want to lose talent like that. But if he is intent on leaving the program and finding uh, greener pastures elsewhere, if there's a position group that could absorb that hit and I think just keep moving forward and fill that role and uh, be able to absorb that loss, it's probably BYU's tight end position. I, I'm serious about that. I think it's actually a very, very uh, solid space for BYU to be in if he intends to leave. Like I said, it, it, it's always a loss when a guy decides it's his time to move on. He doesn't necessarily want to stick around at BYU. You, you don't want to see that happen. But I, I think the tight end position will be okay. Now, one other quick note, uh, BYU's new basketball uniforms. I am a fan of them. I, I actually, I'm a guy who actually always really kind of liked the Brigham Young uh, on the uniforms. I wanted to see them and I saw it out on social media. I don't know who did it. It might've been BYU uniform tracker. The old Gothic uh, Brigham Young that they wore, they had those baby blue jerseys from way back. Was it the seventies or the eighties? They wore those and they pulled them out every so often uh, throughout BYU basketball history as a throwback. That Gothic Brigham Young was my preferred script if BYU was going to change up these uniforms. Now, I will also admit, if you're going to put BYU on a uniform, the way they did this with this new uniform, and I tried to get the 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 link to copy over. Maybe I actually can do this right now. Let's hold on for just a second. I'm going to pull up while I do this, while I talk about this. Let me see if I can pull this up as we go along here. I might be able to share my uh, page and we can see that real quick. But the bigger thing I think right now for BYU basketball is that they're trying to refresh their look as they go in uh, to the new era of BYU basketball. I, I don't necessarily think that they had a bad look by any means, but it just been there for a while. It kind of gotten stale, I guess is the easiest way to say that. All right, so let's see if I can share this with you guys. We're going to do a share screen, Chrome tab, and share. Did it work? Hopefully it did. I don't know if it did yet. No, it didn't. All right. There we go. Now we're cooking with peanut oil, my friends. So there you go. That's the look of BYU uh, basketball's new jerseys. I'm actually a fan. Uh, it's pretty clean look, I think, overall. Now, the bigger thing I'm, I'll be wondering about is if BYU is going to have a royal blue jersey that complements this, if they go with a blackout, etc. But I think it's actually a pretty good look, all things considered. Now, here's a little more of a close-up of the BYU. Now, you're probably wondering, this outline on the 21 there, is it is is this a uh, black or is it Navy? It is Navy. I, I scrolled in. Uh, I, zo I guess I zoomed in. I didn't scroll in. I zoomed in to see if that was going to be what color. It looks like it is Navy as the outline there on the numbers. And that's just one more look. They got the little BYU basketball logo down here on the on on the pants but I, I think it's a pretty clean look all things considered so i guess i can uh, get rid of sharing that but i think the bigger thing for byu basketball is that nike is innovating they they wanted to refresh byu's look while i favored the brigham young and uh keeping that script on the jersey if at all possible the way they did that with the byu with the royal outline with kind of the white uh big block letter byu I'm actually a fan. I'm a bigger fan than I thought I was going to be. Uh, my first impression was like, okay, that's not bad, actually. I, I, I'm, I don't think it's, it's a bad look by any means, but obviously I'm hoping to see uh, more from BYU. I hope to have a Royal uh, jersey coming. Uh, I'm sure there'll be Navy mixed in, but I'd be all for having another blackout jersey with the Royal accents. Uh, I think Mark Pope's probably working on that, but I think that for their debut of their first new jersey, I think it was a solid solid win for the BYU football program, uh, not BYU football, BYU basketball program. <laughs> All right. That is going to do it for today's edition of the podcast. Thank you for making us your first listen of the day. Want to encourage you guys now to make your second listen. Our friends over the locked on big 12 podcast. They do a great job covering all things in the big 12. Josh neighbors is your host over there. Check that out. Get it free and available wherever you get your podcast, just like this one, or check it out on YouTube. That'll do it for us. Have a great rest of your day. This has been the locked on Cougars podcast. See ya.